interestingly enough, I had a power surge happen and uh, we we lost you for a minute there, but a two out did happen and we have a tie game. We're right back in this uh, and really good performance from IA to go ahead and just tie up the game. So um, yeah, unfortunate about the power surge. Sorry, had some power issues here. Um, shouldn't be an issue here in the future though. Um, however, if you guys have been keeping up in our chat, um, Outlaws of the Fog managed to get a two out with Wakanda dying with one progression, um, which brings our score from 28 to 28. We are at a tied game going into match three here. Oh man, yeah, definitely amazing play of the hag to go ahead and come in with the basement play, right? Absolutely. Um, not, I mean, that's a, a pretty safe tactic for Hag to employ, though, especially when she gets that web set and she had a lot of setup time. That's a very sticky place um, for survivors to get caught. And, uh, you know, survivors tend to run on the altruistic side. So it's a great way to take advantage of that mentality there. Yeah, definitely was uh, great to see for sure. Um with uh with our survivors i think that they in fact played pretty well as well dealing with the basement hag um they did have a few hook trades there but wakanda doing a good job of getting out of the basement there a couple times to uh go ahead and make sure hag wasn't able to get as much pressure it would have been crazy because at one point we could have had three people maybe hanging in the basement and that would have been a crazy amount of pressure for hag uh that would have been uh evie being the only one to uh, or evie being the only one not able to uh be caught by the hag you know absolutely i actually don't know if we saw evie um get caught at all there um but yeah uh definitely a few small mistakes made on the survivor side that hag absolutely uh capitalized on but they were able to pull through in the end and get their people out of the basement as much as possible yeah, which is super important to see, especially as we're talking about how much of a close match this is. Absolutely. We are now looking at a tied score. So the heat is on um, for one of our teams to pull ahead here and um, try to get any sort of substantial lead. For sure. And we are seeing uh, our survivors starting to get set here. And uh everybody with us if you haven't already refresh your browsers make sure that you are counting there as a viewer and can predict with your channel points there for our next trial outcome uh and definitely i see uh we are wanting some demo puppy play here and i've been asking all day i've been asking all day for demo puppy we haven't had demo puppy yet though so for sure we'll keep on we'll keep on waiting see if maybe we get a demo puppy at some point um but uh this has been an exciting matchup so far it's crazy that here at kind of the halftime of this uh matchup it's a tie game we're pretty much back to zero zero yeah, we're pretty much back where we started, absolutely. Um, so a lot of pressure, but I think both teams are starting to get a feel for one another. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they respond to each other going into this next match, having played um, one match on either side here. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely agree. This is, uh, is going to be tough to see if, uh, if our uh, survivors go ahead and pressure this out um for sure the map we'll be on uh is the grim pantry for all for those who don't know i was having some issue with our grim pantry video for a second there so i'm not going to roll that again but guys uh we will be going back to grim pantry the uh the map is a little bit larger than average and has a good amount of hooks for us to be able to utilize there so it uh it is as we talked about before that center section having a pallet that you can use but kind of being a zone you don't want to be found in after that pallet's gone absolutely you um you definitely have to play that uh center area very strategically once that pallet is gone um 
Which means potentially utilizing your perk setup to best deal with that situation in the middle there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's definitely, um, it is something to uh, pay attention to, just like when we were talking about Thompson House in the last matchup, and we were talking about how you really have to make sure that your resource management um, is kept in check and we saw with uh with the wraith game there that a lot of uh a lot of the survivors ended up consuming pallets that they shouldn't have um necessarily and wraith was able to go ahead and pressure that out use bamboozle and punish them for it so same kind of thing can happen here and for sure uh hag just utilized having her web set but uh for for the survivors uh, and for that Nemesis game, I feel like Nemesis actually did utilize the fact that pallets were gone and you could just use your tentacle to go ahead and pressure as well and force them into three genning themselves. This is a map that a three gen uh, can really punish you for. Absolutely, um, especially uh, this map tends to generate some really tight three gens if you aren't careful um, on really either side of that middle area. So really really dangerous um if you don't have the resources there as well mm -hmm. yeah definitely have to agree uh our survivors of course uh want to make sure that they can get out here for outlaws of the fog that way uh they can go ahead and put their killer in best position to uh clinch the win here for them this for sure is not going to be a match that uh that decides it here, we are for sure going to a fourth trial with the tie game here, so. Um, Absolutely at this point. Yeah, should be really interesting to see who comes out of this on top. This is really exciting to have a tie match right now. Absolutely, I love to see that both teams have really come out swinging, um, really good games on both sides so far, and I'm excited to see what the second half of this matchup brings us. Definitely, uh, our survivors doing well our killers doing well and really being kind of an even matchup uh just across the board having a two out having a um yeah having a having a two out for um survivors in both trials and making sure that we ended up in a tie game like same hook states even right um, absolutely yeah i feel like they uh, looked at each other and were like all right i see you i can do that too yeah, right? It's, on both it's, sides, on both sides, yeah. It, it wasn't even like, a, I could do that, but better. It's like, a, oh, you do that, I do that. <laughs> like like an acknowledgement, like, yeah, we're on even ground here. Mm -hmm. And so for sure, uh, awesome to see. We do see the bloody blueprints. We see the cut coin that we want to see. So let's go and review some build rules here. All right, guys, so of course, yellow items and below for the killer and survivors, but you can only have one of each perk and item there. Uh, duplicate BT is allowed, but there are banned perks here being built to last, prove thyself, starstruck, haunted ground, lethal pursuer, any of the boons, and clairvoyance. The killer uses are limited to twice a season, so for sure, these teams are trying to make sure that they are holding certain killers for certain matches and the survivors can only bring one of each survivor so you won't see four dwights one locker using four dwights for more on these rules check rule uh, exclamation point rules in chat getting into our third game here what do your eyes spy there vader i spy with my little eye a spirit Bringing out the big guns here, Spirit, even after her nerf, still, um, still a top tier killer in the right hands. For sure, it raised the skill ceiling a little bit, but let's see how Crypto does. This is definitely a matchup to watch. This is make or break for our, our uh, for both of our teams here. Absolutely, and checking out our corrupt zone, finding no survivors there, running off to go check out this we kind of weird corner gen that spawned over here. Yeah, and I think you kind of got unlucky with our corrupt zone a little bit um, because I think where you normally want to have a three gen is over there uh, next 
to that other building so we see like the gens that we want to be our three gen are actually the ones that aren't corrupt right so we're kind of we're staying over here in this kind of four gen area for sure uh and i guess that means that the survivors aren't going to be progressing those gens but at the same time the survivors are likely not going to come over here either they're likely just Absolutely. gonna wait out the corrupt Absolutely. I think we do see our survivors kind of playing it very patiently and very stealthily, kind of just like waiting out that corrupt, seeing what our spirit is kind of doing. I think they've realized that she's um, really mostly not concerned about her three gen and sticking to those open gen. So they're responding with, yeah, we can wait too. Yeah, and I think that's definitely really important. Uh, especially as that directional phase sound will be there. Our survivors are doing a really good job of hiding right now. Absolutely very stealthy. We do, I did, was that a little bit of gen progress we heard somewhere? I'm not entirely sure. No, I don't think it was, but the the opportunity of the spirit not leaving and her totem being so far away from her, the, the survivors have taken that opportunity and gone ahead and popped it. And I can confirm at this point, even though we didn't see it, that was ruined. Absolutely good use of their time. They didn't want to engage um, unless it was on their terms. So they spent the time that she was looking at the generators looking for that totem which is rather smart for our survivors. They know what like what stake what's at stake here. Yeah, for sure. And our uh, our survivors are going ahead and uh, getting on another gen here. We are actually seeing two survivors at this point. So uh, now that corrupt is down, the real game begins. It was a very slow Absolutely. startup, but here, we're now in the thick of it. Absolutely, and um, our spirit here has drawn a first blood on gum, trying to use her phase walk to kind of get a mind game here. Um, but upon, I guess, not finding anything there, um, going off to patrol the other generators that she hasn't been paying attention to for um, a minute or two here. Yeah, and I thought I just saw progress over there, and I don't think our spirit saw it. But maybe our spirit's being smart. Oh, super smart. Going right to the gen I saw progressing. We do and our see... survivor took the time to take off there as a gen pops in the distance. Yeah, for sure. And chasing Wakanda here, uh, for those that know about Wakanda, Wakanda is a very experienced looper. So this is uh, this is for sure dangerous territory for our uh, spirit to be in, to go ahead and be chasing Wakanda, who can really escape just like this and uh, not get touched. Absolutely. Um, this is a very safe place as well for Wakanda to be um, holding this chase. Yeah, I've seen Wakanda get several five gen runs for sure. So it's dangerous you do territory. See another gen here is popping. So Wakanda buying enough time for that other gen to go, forcing our spirit to leave and check out what's going on elsewhere on the map. Lest he lose another uh, generator here. Yeah, and we do see our uh, we do see our survivors going ahead and uh, trying to make sure that they're not giving up uh, reckless hook states. For sure, though, our uh, oh our fang going down here. Unfortunately, that is going to result in another hook. Our spirit was smart to drop Wakanda and uh, go ahead and pressure other survivors. Absolutely, um, good job on the spirit's part um to recognize when she needed to leave that and that has allowed her to get this first hook on evie here yeah and if you notice that's pop goes the weasel right there so for sure that's the slowdown perk that's going to tr be trying to help us but repress alliance and uh repress alliance coming in to save the day as she checks out this other generator for sure i i I almost think that uh, I may have held on to my repressed alliance right there. Uh, and the only reason I say so is she already used pop. And from that vantage point, you should have been able to see that pop was already utilized. So uh, if you save it, the next time a hook happens, you potentially can then uh, use repress then. Absolutely. Definitely maybe a little bit of a misplay on our survivor's part, um, but spirit not not choosing to chase gum here as evie gets uh unhooked in the distance instead going to check out that generator that she knew had a lot of progress on it even though it was repressed 
and Wakanda was right here chilling, wanting to get chased, and we do see the chase happen for Wakanda. We'll see if they can get away. Absolutely. Wakanda Ooh. picking up this chase for their team. It's using balanced landing to try to gain some distance here as another gen <laughs> pops. But Wakanda will go down to the Spirit's Blade. Yeah, unfortunately, that Yamaoka Blade finding a home in the back of Wakanda there as Wakanda tried to fake the pallet and going around to make sure that uh, Spirit hopefully chased the wrong direction. Spirit not fooled. Absolutely, and that will be the second hook for our spirit here. But we do see our fourth generator pop for our survivors. And as uh, as we come back to check on Wakanda on the hook, I uh, I think that was a swing at Rambo that instead uh, auto locked onto Wakanda there. It did. Made it look like there was a little bit of BM, but no real BM. Love, love those little visual things here. Um, Rambo taking the chase up into the top of the pantry, but Spirit's not playing that game. She's going to come back to this hook. Yeah, and definitely it looks like didn't expect Wakanda maybe have a uh, borrowed time or not. So going ahead and hitting Wakanda, testing the waters. Oh. Absolutely. I'm going to chew through that borrowed time to continue this chase, but Wakanda making it to the window vault before Spirit can catch her. For sure, and uh, our our survivor using balance landing again to perfection, just going ahead and showing us how to use the perks as much as you can for these chases. What great play from Wakanda. Absolutely, unfortunately, Wakanda will go down one more time, even as their teammates are resetting. Um, This will be a second hook state for Wakanda and a third hook for our spirit here. Yeah, definitely not what you want if you're Wakanda. You're trying to make sure that you're not uh, getting uh, killed like that. But uh, I'm noticing a haste effect, aren't you? I am noticing that our spirit, as fast as she already is, is considerably faster. And she's going to sit here and babysit this gen, hoping to uh, fool our survivors into coming in to save Wakanda here. For sure. Maybe trying to also bait a phase, now actually phasing, but not really. Absolutely. Um, and it doesn't look like our survivors are down to play a game. It looks like they are going to just open that gate. And they are going to take the three out. And uh, Wakanda will progress to death there, but ensure that his uh, teammates will get out. That was the smartest play there as well, honestly, because the, the, uh, the killer uh, is trying to go ahead and, uh, like, get you to make that mistake. But by taking the three out, you have extended your lead. You now have an 11-point lead going into your killer matchup. So for sure, Absolutely. that is amazing. This is such a good showing for the survivors. Absolutely. Um, a very good showing on the survivors' part. Um, we had some really smart phasing from the spirit there but the survivors are just cranking out those gens just chewing through them as quick as they could uh getting ruin out early really did them some favors there i feel like i would have to agree this is definitely uh this has been a very good showing and i'm wondering who we are gonna see on the killer side from outlaws to try to uh try to finish this off finish off this victory because an 11 point lead while it may be a little bit comfortable it is not the most comfortable as the survivors of uh, Immortal Alliance could just do the same and get a three out, force it into sudden death. Or, uh, I mean, it's it's really tough to say, like, who, who, could, uh, who could end up winning this at this point, right? Absolutely. And there is a lot of pressure on the killer for um, Outlaws here because um, they both know what Immortal Alliance has to do here to win. They know exactly what the conditions of the game are, and so both are going to be fighting to either make or break those conditions here. Yeah, agreed. And we do see Le Gum, Le Five Gum TTV will be our killer for Outlaws of the Fog. So we'll see uh, in their killer debut in this league, who do they choose to bring? Do you think they bring an S tier like we saw from Immortal Alliance bringing the Spirit? 
I feel like I shouldn't speak about this part. Ah, uh, I see, I see, I see. Uh, well, um, then I, I'll I don't, go ahead I don't and want speak to spill the it. beans in my excitement, but who do you think they're going to bring? What do you think they're going to, with such a with such a close point tie up, what do you think would be the smart play to do here? I think smart play here would be to. Eh, I could see either an Oni, I could see a Wraith being okay, a Huntress. I want to see a Huntress. We still haven't seen a Huntress today. I want to see a Hunty. A lot of people have been asking for Hunty, so... I mean, have to see how that goes. Also Demo. Also Demo. Also Demo Puppy would be a nice choice here. I still want to see Demo. Absolutely. I would love to see Demo Puppy. But you know, there are still other options to see Demo Puppy. However, if you guys don't have Demo Puppy yet, this is your reminder. Demo Puppy is going to be leaving us soon. And if you don't have him, now would be the time to maybe consider going on and snatching him as well as Steve and Nancy up out of the shop. Of course, their perks are going to become general perks, so you will have access to them. They are not being removed from the game, thankfully. But... If you want to enjoy all of the goodness that comes with playing the demo puppy, um, you definitely want to go ahead and jump on that now before it is just too late. Yep, I would agree for sure. Uh, these survivors are trying to get set here. And really, this has been a really exciting matchup. And our next matchup for the day is what, at 9 p.m. Eastern tonight, I believe? Actually, I think it's at 6 p.m. unless I've written our schedule down wrong. Oh, well. If it's at 6 p.m., then we don't have a 9 p.m. Eastern game. And if that is uh, if that is the case, then uh, yeah, we don't we don't have a nine. You're right. It is a six Eastern game. So uh, that is that means we will be ending kind of early ish for Vigos because we're used to having that 9 p.m. slot filled. So definitely will be uh, pretty exciting having another game about. Uh, looks like uh, two hours after this one will probably, or an hour and a half after this one will wrap up probably. So um, give everybody a chance to stretch and everything and get ready for the final match of of uh, of week one. I Well, I, I guess I can't say final match because we do have a match actually tomorrow that will be happening uh, dark mode. So um, it won't be a streamed match. Yeah, our final streamed match of the of week one for sure, though, mm -hmm. yeah. will be um, at, at 6 p.m. EST. So make sure you guys are here to watch Corrupt take on Wrecking Crew. Oh, and that should be that should be pretty crazy. Corrupt has really come into the league and shown that they are a force to be reckoned with um, in the Absolutely. preseason. Absolutely. So should oh, yeah. be interesting to see them match up against Wrecking Crew. Mm -hmm. And um, having seen some of the players that are on Corrupt play before, I mean, they are definitely, even if you weren't going off of um, their preseason showing, they are definitely a team to be reckoned with. Yeah, they're pretty stacked. They're made up with a lot of people from Runaways, if uh, you guys are uh, familiar with that team from other leagues. So uh, should be really interesting seeing them play later on today. Um, it's looking like our survivors have their loadouts pretty much ready, though. So I think we are close to getting uh, getting going. And of course, uh, with us going to Grim Pantry, this is the final match of the day. I hope you guys are uh, predicting there for who will be convicted of murder. But I think this is leaning in Outlaw's favor for sure right now. Uh, it's it's tough to say though, because I know that uh, Immortal Alliance has really good survivors on their end, and if they can if they can punish whatever killer choice is uh, is here, then it could swing. So we'll see. So <laughs> <laughs> the adrenaline I'm so is nervous. pumping. Yeah, oh my the goodness. adrenaline is definitely pumping. I'm definitely excited to see how this last match goes. Um, no matter what, it's going to be an incredible incredible game. I can already tell. Um, so I'm just, I'm very excited to see what happens and no matter what, I know it's going to be a good time. Um, but I, you know, I am also a little biased because I, you know, Outlaws are my homies. I have so much love for them, <laughs> but you know, Immortal Alliance is, is a good foe for them. Definitely. So I don't know. I have homies on both teams here, so I'm split. Mm -hmm. I know like definitely if, uh, if anybody, 
it, whoever loses, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have homies that are upset about it on either side, who, which, whichever way this happens, right? <laughs> you know what though, they shouldn't be upset because no matter who wins or loses here, the important thing is that they put on a very good show. This is only game one for them for the season. This is this is the first week of the season. They have so much room to grow and go from from here. And no matter what happens, they should be proud of the strong showing they have put out here on both sides. On both sides. I think the lobby just broke. Oh. The lobby did break. We went to we went to start, and I saw everybody just disappear and i was like did the entity just yeet them from my lobby everybody the, uh, the entity was like we're stalling yeet a hundred percent lobby broke uh <laughs> as soon as we tried to uh go to spectator they're just like whoop no more no more match <laughs> just a quick little boop yep a hundred percent but you know like Everybody never, never, good. and never any bugs in Dead by Daylight. Never, never. any bugs. Ugh. They've always done a pretty good job so far. Pretty, I think we've done a pretty good job so far. <laughs> I'm sure that, like, uh, Matthew Cotier has to, like, just... I wonder if he hates that quote. I would. I would be so mad. It. But at the same time, like, during the anniversary event, he played to it. Like... It, it, like uh during fifth anniversary he's like he's like i have said and i will I'll, I'll say again i think we've done a pretty good job so far and i was like ah, ah. But, good for him uh, for being a good sport yeah good for him for being a good sport he probably does Absolutely. hate it though <laughs> well you know at least he doesn't show it he's like i won't show them my weakness <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can't let them know that they actually hurt me <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Don't show pain. The, I don't Never. know, man. This community can be brutal. They're like piranhas. But at the same time, what we already said last time, they've been pretty wholesome. Pretty yeah, wholesome. Yeah, for the man. most part. For the most part. Good community. We love community. But uh, definitely, we're, we're waiting on the last survivor to get back in the lobby. I hope the lobby's not broken to where they can't join. I've seen the invite go out to them a couple times here. Uh, it Dead could by also Daylight be that maybe they're playing... having a problem on their side. Maybe. Um, our killer is actually the I've one who got seen. yeeted from the lobby and caused a full reset. Um, yeah. Uh, so for sure, for sure. Wondering uh, if... Dead by Daylight is gonna play nice with us uh, as Crypto is unable to uh, join here, it seems. Unless... Is Crypto able to join him? Yeah, I, I don't... I don't know. I see two survivors readying up, but that's only two out of three survivors. Like, you don't, you don't have your fourth survivor. There's another invite being sent out, and Crypto has joined, so we should be getting all the way set now. Crisis averted. Thank goodness. Indeed. Uh, so for sure, uh, I see all the predictions have come in, and I think I think that uh, chat is definitely saying Outlaws is the heavy favorite to win three thousand seven hundred and ten blood points to three hundred and sixty blood points for Immortal Alliance. So for sure, I think that chat is over here. Uh, that picking who they think is going to win. Let's see if that is true or not. This is going to be the trial to decide it all. Absolutely. And, you know, um, I don't blame chat because Outlaws has really shown up and, like, shown what they're made of. But I think Immortal Alliance, I don't know. I think they could surprise us. I mean, not surprise us. It's a pretty close game still. It's only an 11-point lead here. So... They need to make up that 11 points and then make more points on top of that to take this. But I don't know. I going to be a close one either way. I would agree. And that would give uh, that would give Outlaws of the Fog a one and oh record if they are able to come out of this with the with the with the win, which for a debut in uh, in a comp league like Vigos, that is amazing. Uh, that is exactly Absolutely. what you want to see. 
And we've been kicked from the lobby again, everybody. That is two for two kicked from the lobby. So I am going to reset my Dead by Daylight just in case we're having an issue with that. But uh, it looks like our killer Le Five Gum is in the chat also saying, why is this not working? I am gonna recommend to everybody, everyone reset your Dead by Daylight. And as you'll notice, we've got a user menu above because Dead by Daylight crash. Um, I feel like you know why this is happening. Hmm? Nothing, nothing. You feel like you know? Hmm? I feel like Gum knows why this is happening. Oh no. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a joke. It's an inside joke. Wait, Gum is the one who always gets kicked from the party if he sits too long in the lobby, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I feel even more. I, I, I don't know if it happens um, when he plays Killer. I think it mostly only happens when he plays Survivor. So, I don't know if that's an issue we're facing here. <laughs> I've definitely He does constantly fight that struggle though. He constantly. does constantly fight that struggle. If, though. if I'm if I'm spending blood points and we're swiffing and he's like he's like, no, hurry up, ready up, ready up, ready up. If you don't ready up, I'm gonna get kicked. And then all of a sudden, kick. Ugh. <laughs> it's always we always look at it. We're like, yeah, we're placing bets on when uh when gun it's nice when uh he lasts like like two or three games before getting kicked, we're always like, wow. Eh? Hey, golf claps, golf claps. Yeah, like, what what did you do right today for the entity to decide not to just yeah, what shoo did you, you out How did here? you please the entity this time? My goodness, yeah. So <laughs> we'll definitely we'll definitely see how this uh, how this goes here shortly. And Shep, I have restarted the game stream. If you want to have some game audio that you can hear uh, when we get into match. Thank you so much for that. Mm, you're welcome. Appreciate it greatly. Um, I am looking for our survivors. All right, survivors invited. Let's go ahead and uh, let's let's be ready to match up again here, right? I'm just so anxious. <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah, the whole reason that we have, like, we have all of this happening right now is actually, like, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. But what we're really trying to do, like, hey, wait, wait. Oh, no. You're not supposed to listen. I I'm going to say this oh, so okay, she can't hear, okay? Let me pick up okay? my listening ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, I'll hold cover on, my hold ears. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to make it so Shep is over here, like, freaking out about, like, just, just all the adrenaline pumping and everything. Like, that was the whole point you know and um it's working i think it's working all right you, can, you can put you your ears back on, on my Wait anxiety i mean i'm sorry you what were you talking listening? about oh no you were I, uh, no i took I my listening ears off i even covered my ears and everything like i couldn't hear a thing <laughs> you were saying <laughs> i love it love it I, get, right. I actually get like this um every game that i'm casting honestly yeah. It, it, yeah, I get I get really anxious um, around the fourth game, especially when it's really close like this. I get really anxious for anyone I watch playing. So this isn't just this isn't just my investment in uh, in Outlaws, but this is actually a very common occurrence. I'm just like, oh god, <laughs> oh who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? I don't oh know. man, I don't deal I don't deal well with like not knowing things. My goodness, I I think it would be it would be really fun to uh, go to a sporting event that and just like have it be like the closest sporting event there is. Uh, <laughs> Just it, that would be a bunch of fun. You'd be like freaking out right there and be like, Shep, Shep, it's okay. It's okay. No, who's going to win? Ah, I love it. I'm, I'm fun to put into anxiety inducing situations. <laughs> well, then Dead by Daylight's perfectly your game, right? Yeah, that's why I love Dead by Daylight, because I'm always anxious. I'm like, oh, God, the adrenaline from the anxiety. It works <laughs> out for me, honestly. We're, I'm playing. I'm using my weakness as my strength here. <laughs> Ooh, we love that. And we are actually getting into a match, guys, for sure. Love it. Oh my gosh. And I think Le Five Gum it. has already confirmed no demo here, unfortunately. He said me with demo equal trash, so no demo. Fortunately. Fortunately. <laughs> Let's go ahead and review some penalty rules though, real quick. Cause definitely if you do something that is not allowed in the rules, it'll be a match with a penalty, which could be played out or restarted or both. 
uh, for sure, just kind of depends. The ref will tell you what's going on. If you have two of the same survivor, that's going to be a negative five points. Uh, and that's the same if you have a band perk or add on. Uh, and definitely wrong map, negative five points as well. And I'm going to end this video early because what we got is a game, guys. We have a game starting now and we have a plague. Plaga, good old Vami Mommy coming out to play. Plague, plague. And uh, going ahead and just putting some infection down on these first couple of generators that are outside of her corrupted zone. I'm um, oh. just doing a little bit of setup here, but we have found uh, some scratch marks and it looks like we will find our first survivor pretty early on. Yeah, and, uh, we will. putting that infection down on him immediately. That, and this is just great because as you can tell there those are double effectiveness add-ons so uh you are definitely just yeah. wanting to vomit on them just like that and get this early down oh my gosh techno badger brutal. going down so quick absolutely and that is going to be the first down pretty immediately into the game we do see an attempt at a flashlight save there but unfortunately uh, Gum here was looking into the barrels and was able to avoid that bright beam of light and is now looking for whoever had the audacity to try to flashlight him here. You know, I like, yeah, somebody definitely was pretty, pretty aggressive to try to get the uh, flashlight blind, but Gum being uh, very smart to go ahead and block it with a uh, obstacle there. Absolutely. Um, and we do see uh, Claudette getting infected here. So that means she touched um, a generator that was thrown up on. I hate saying that, honestly. Mm. Um, but it looks like our plague here will start chase with the Fang Min, trying to put down that puke, um, utilizing the pallet there to uh, kind of make this a not great situation for Fang. Because if she touches it, that just adds to the infection rate. Yeah, indeed, and it has added to it, so go ahead and break this. You know that Fang is going to go there. It is broken, so for sure. Actually, see infection on all four survivors here now. Nancy has gone and touched a generator to try to put some work down and has gotten sick herself. I think Nancy actually was our uh, unhooker because it oh, happened oh. with the unhook. Good eye there. And you know, guys, um, this is just just goes to show why masks and hand washing are very important. Oh no. In this day and age, in this house. In this day and age, <laughs> in this house. Plays plays a little on the nose in, in these times. Um, oh. but definitely coming back to check out our progress on our generators. Um, I couldn't tell if uh, there was any ruin on the table there. But I think there might be. We do see the sparks and we haven't seen a kick, so I will confirm there is a ruin. Yep, and we do see scratch marks, so we are chasing another survivor, and everybody is in fully infected and broken here. So if she can capitalize on this, this could be some very easy downs. Um, no pallet down here for our survivor to use. Um, unfortunately, Plague misses the swing here, so uh, Ace is able to take advantage of the upstairs pallet. Unfortunately, he misplays the pallet game and will go down to the Plague sensor. And that's going to be a second hook, I think. Uh, and uh, it looks like uh, it won't be a death hook for sure because he didn't go second state. But that's good. That actually means you get more points off of it as there wasn't a progression that happened earlier. So for Absolutely. sure, great for the gum. Absolutely. And um, I will note that we are still at five gens here. So Gum really putting down that pressure on these survivors. He's already got two hook states. We do see our first generator of the match go, though. So good for our survivors here working through that infection um, to really try to get these objectives done. Yeah. And there goes yet another one. They were utilizing their time wisely. I definitely would have to agree utilizing it very wisely. And I think our plague thought they were hiding in the tall grass, but in fact, I think they actually just sped up and went to the unhook. I I would agree there. We do find another survivor here. I'm um, trying to work on this upstairs gen in the pantry, which uh, is a pretty important place to be, but unfortunately she doesn't make the window quite fast enough and will go down as she is still broken from the infected status. Yeah, and we do see our first few cleanses here. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see how teams will play the cleanse or don't cleanse game. 
definitely, um, if you don't have that mechanic down, it can be rather tricky when to know when to cleanse and when not to cleanse here. So we do see they make the smart move and remove that broken status from Ace, who is on death hook here. Interesting seeing our Claudette go ahead and remove it though too, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, um, a very interesting choice um, for Claudette to also cleanse here as well. But we do find another sick survivor and that does sound like a little Fang coughing there and we do see that Fang is broken. Oh, you know what else we see that's broken? We see a totem fall and that was Absolutely. our ruin. Ruin is now out of the game. It has done its work, but the survivors made quick work of it. And uh, Gum is chasing our Fang Min down here and will get her down as we see uh, Ace and Claudette get infected all over again. Yeah, kind of unfortunate, right? You went ahead and touched a gen uh, that uh, got you infected, right? Now, Absolutely. my question would be, was it possibly a Nancy walking over to like help them with the gen or like hop on a gen that got them both infected like that? Because uh, our plague was in chase for quite a bit of time. So you know that uh, plague her her generator uh, or the generator shouldn't have been like that that it shouldn't have been long enough for them to uh still be infected right absolutely and we will see play pick up her power here and see a survivor off in the distance if she can land these long range shots this could spell disaster for our survivors Ooh, unlucky. not quite making it there as another generator pops off in the distance but she has closed the gap between the two um, unfortunately, we see a misuse of the firecrackers there, but Ace will take the injured state. Um, not quite a down just yet, but he will go down there. And unfortunately, our Ace is on death hook. Yeah, and we will see. There is the hook right there, and that is the first death. If we can get, I think, one more death clenches it, I think, maybe. Or maybe that may have clenched it already, actually, for Outlaws of the Fog. I'm uh, not entirely sure there, but it just might be. I think um, we'll just have to see how the rest of the game goes. And we have found another survivor while we are still in our power. And we will get another down with our Corrupt Plague right this, as it ends. This is actually the hook. Uh, we've done the map now. This is the hook needed to secure the game. So definitely Plague wanting to get this hook. Where is she going? Where's she going? Oh no, no I don't think Hopefully she makes she it. she can get down to that basement in time. I don't know about this front one. Front hook, front hook, no! Oh no, it doesn't quite make it, unfortunately. So she will have to go back. But if she can get this, this will secure the game in Outlaw's favor. So Plague really feeling the pressure here. She's definitely got to get this Fang Min down. Oh no, Fang going to the corner, but that's a corner with the hook, Fang! You've made a mistake! Unfortunate misplay here as Fang has brought Plague straight where she wants her, right underneath a hook, and that will be Fangman going on the hook, and even as another gen pops in the distance. With everybody in the broken state, we see Plague doing exactly what we expect here. Go ahead and grab power. These survivors are broken. So let them go ahead and... Oh, cleanse? Yes. Just uh, cleansing here will give her more of her power too. Um, or more opportunities to pick up her power. So a really risky play. But, you know, honestly, since she has picked up her power, kind of smart. Because now she has to spit on them twice to get them down if she wants to use her corrupt plague effectively. Yeah, definitely these uh, survivors as well. We can tell this survivor's broken because you see the blood. So that is going to be unfortunate. That's a down and right there Nancy on the Nancy. Nancy goes down to the corrupt plague, unfortunately. We do see Fang Min getting unhooked at the last second, but we see that's going to cause Crypto to go ahead and go into Infected again. So what's going to happen here? I think uh, that probably Fang is over there probably cleansing, I would think, on that uh, on that Corrupt that was right there next to where she got hooked. But uh, we'll so. see. I'm going over to pick up his power once more, just keeping the pressure on these survivors. And um, Claudette is over here infected. 
So all he's got to do is potentially wait for her to enter the broken status and then she's a one hit down no matter what. Oh, Fang Min went for the unhook, I think, instead of uh, instead of going after um, anything else. Or was this possibly a deliverance? You know, hard to tell with uh, everyone inherently getting the broken status from how Plague's power work. It could have been a deliverance play, though. Yeah, I, I really, I really don't know. Nope, we see two survivors. I think that was a Fang Min unhook. I do believe you are right, and she does have her power, and these survivors are both injured. This could be deadly. There is no pallet down here. Let's see what happens. Nancy will go down, and it looks like our plague will go and hunt that thing down that she knew was up here at one point. Yep, and it looks like she's going to get the down. I don't think there's any way Fang avoids it. Can't make it to the pallet. That's going to be, I believe, a death hook. Um, unless we see the size to strike here, which we do not, it does look like Fang will go to her death hook in the Plague's Loving Arms. But Nancy gets back up. Um, oh. And she is infected. I don't think that was Claudette picking her up. I think that might have been an unbreakable play there. Unfortunately, she comes down, airdrops right into Plague's Loving Arms, um, and will go down once more. And we're seeing Plague look back up like, but you, you came down from there, right, right there? I think she was also <laughs> surprised um, by our airdrop Nancy there. But this leaves Claudette as the only survivor on the map. She is uninfected as of right now, which gives her a chance to find the hatch. Or... And find the hatch she does. That is going to be a one out. But that is a impressive showing from Outlaws of the Fog to go ahead and clinch this and become uh, one and O oh here. 68-44 being the final score. I'm sorry, I'm so um, happy for them because they really worked hard for this. Um, and uh, they knew um, they knew this was going to be a hard match and they really worked hard. So to see all of the hard work and the sweat that they put in pay off for them, um, I'm a little emotional, you know? Like, I, these are all of my very good friends and I, I can't express how insanely, insanely proud I am of them. Um, because I know, I know what they've been putting into this. For sure. Um, and again, like a very good game. Um, they knew this was going to be a tough match um, and it was not easy at all. It was not easy for them. So I'm just, I'm so proud of them um, for their debut into uh, Vigo's court. I I couldn't have thought they would do any better, I, I think. I don't know. Yeah, that's... I don't even know if this is the right words to use here. Oh. <laughs> That's a, that's oh. definitely a pretty decisive win. Definitely, we got Shep over here uh, freaking out that uh, that Outlaws has a won, and love to see it. Love to see it. Uh, definitely, congratulations uh, to Outlaws of the Fog. You have been convicted of murder. But definitely, for IA as well, excellent game that was played. I mean, really, to gosh, both yes. teams you guys you guys did so well um, absolutely um not an easy match mm -hmm. at all that was a that was a like all out like drag down fight to the end there it went all the way to the final trial so for sure that is uh that is amazing to see mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh absolutely absolutely and I think we're gonna have Gum come in for a uh, for a interview here into the interrogation room. So definitely gonna be super cool for both of us who, uh, of course, Swift and uh, play with Gum uh, outside of Comp DVD and Gum. You're actually here already. How are you, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing doing pretty good, man. I'm I was. Uh... I wouldn't say I was nervous for this game, but I definitely was really excited to play in my first Vigos match. Um, it was something I wanted to do ever since I saw the preseason starting, and I'm just happy to be part of this. Yeah, man, it, and that was uh, quite a debut to go ahead and uh, go ahead and bring out uh, the plague as well as your matches yeah. for Survivor. You you did very well in today's match. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, we were planning on the second match of Survivor to switch out Osu for me, but mm -hmm. we felt so confident that we just we, we rolled with the same squad, we changed up our builds, and it played off. Yeah, that definitely smart play there. I mean, you guys, uh, you guys did very well. And walk us through the Hag game. Uh, it seemed like Hag had yeah. quite a bit of pressure um, on you guys. Uh, like, uh, how were comms in that moment? Yeah, um, the comms, the comms were pretty good. Um, that save that Rambo tried to get to in the basement didn't play off how we wanted it to. He thought he had. Uh, balance ready, but he was still suffering from exhaustion and uh, didn't play out how we wanted. I got tunnel out of the game, which is fine. Not too mad about that. Uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup there. Uh, the second time I got hooked, uh, no one was really on a generator, but we played it to our best of abilities and uh, it went okay. So. Yeah, that's definitely, like, you guys did really well to still be able to get the two out there and allow for a uh, a tie game. And for sure, uh, then coming right back in the next matchup and going against Spirit, you guys seem to just really, really do that objective time. Was that a key focus for you guys? Yeah, uh, we decided to just wait out the corrupt generators we figured it was spirit she's gonna just try and go for those hook states as early as possible uh get that pressure on us and we just we just waited it out we found ruin really early which is really nice for us and then yeah we just got those gens popping yeah definitely like with it being an edge uh, that was an edge totem that you guys found there in the corrupt yeah. zone where spirit didn't go super lucky totem spawn Yeah Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys are pretty familiar with the totem spawns on that map oh, How yeah. were you guys looking for it or did you just happen to stumble upon it while looking around? So uh, me and Rambo just stayed around Doc uh, uh, Wakanda was over by small building and uh Sevi just decided to go towards Maine to like spread us out and he just happened to find it. It was a very it was so coincidental that we were that was a really lucky find on our part. If we didn't find it, the game could have went a whole different scenario scenario, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was a very lucky early find on that ruin there. Um but good eyes on Evie to go over there and check that out. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling about the rest of your season? This was your guys' first debut into Vigo Sport and for a lot of you into comp in general. Um, so how are you feeling about your next matchup? Is there any in particular that you guys are worried about? Honestly, uh, I'm not too worried about these matches coming up. I'm I'm obviously a little, little worried, but uh, nothing too serious. I feel like our team is going to do pretty well this season. Uh, the underdogs might surprise a lot of you that's all i gotta say definitely uh like we'll be excited to go ahead and keep an eye on you guys for sure strong showing for week one so uh we're, it, it, you definitely have entered the radar probably of a lot of teams here and they might have some teams gunning for you yeah i think you guys have definitely put a target on yourself for the other teams in your bracket um, do you have anything you want to say to um, Immortal Alliance? Immortal Alliance. You guys played it really well. Uh, GG's to all of you. Y'all did really good. Um, I hope to see how we both improve and face each other in the next uh, divisional match we go in. And uh, do you have any words for um, the fans, or maybe even new fans of Outlaws of the Fall? Yeah, I saw y'all uh, quickly changing your votes there from <laughs> IA over to Outlaws. Uh, thank you for those votes. Um, if you are going to be a new supporter, I greatly appreciate that. Um, we are all going to work really hard this season, and we will not let you guys down. 
Oh man, and I'm also seeing Rambo over here saying outlaws better than we overslept. We'll see, we'll see, buddy. Not if I have anything to say about it. But definitely super happy, like as Shep talked about, kind of like the uh like sister team relationship between uh We Overslept and Outlaws. Uh like we're uh we're definitely we're super happy for you guys on the We Overslept side as well. Cheering for you guys, cheering you on, and uh like really wishing for success for both teams. Yeah, I uh not only IA, but I wish everybody the best of luck in this tournament, uh, especially the games coming up here after us. Um Yeah. I hope to see y'all out in the fog. But that's all where right. My interview is gonna end. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we've definitely appreciated having you on here as well. And for sure, we will be keeping an eye on uh, on you guys, seeing uh, where you get to in the end of the season on the road to the final verdict. So for sure, guys, uh, that is going to be all from us. We will see you back here. Or actually, I think... Shep, will, are you with me again uh, for tonight's matchup? You are indeed. Shep with me all day long. All day. I love it. So uh, <laughs> we are going to go ahead and we will see you back here, guys, in about an hour. Yep. Yeah, an hour. Yeah, about an uh, hour, an hour and a half, hour, 20 minutes. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely we'll see you guys then. Uh, have an excellent one guys uh the court stretch. yeah stretch stretch for sure and get some hydration and get some food if you haven't eaten today go eat you know like do, do that so uh i'm gonna eat for one for sure so uh court adjourned see you guys at the next one be there be square <laughs>